This is One on One. And this is part of our Classroom Close-Up series done in cooperation with our partners at the New Jersey Education Association, otherwise known as the NJEA. You're about to meet uh, one of our colleagues. 44 years as a science teacher, I do not believe it. Yeah. Mr. Sai, the science guy, otherwise known as Albert Sai, Sidecki? Sidecki. Sidecki, who is a science teacher at Medford Memorial Middle School. Mr. Sidecki, I apologize for that. Uh, I got to tell you, first of all, I don't buy the fact you've been doing this for 44 years. That's no the, way. It's amazing makeup artist that you have out there. <laughs> No, what do you what do you love about this gig? Um, I've never had two ga two days that were the same ever. Can you imagine that? Uh, you interview people, you can tell there's a different personality with every single individual. That's right. Kids have the same thing times ten. It's amazing. Um, no matter if you have the same schedule or not, the personalities, the things that happen every day. It's just a different chemical mix of intellectual and curious things that happen constantly. It's, uh, uh, what do you call, a uh, continuum of education. It, never, ready? it never stops. You ready? Sorry for interrupting you. I'm a great interviewer, but I interrupt sometimes. Okay. You ready? Yeah. You're about to see a video of yourself doing your thing, part of the Classroom Close-Up series that right now can be seen on our NJTV network with our partners at uh, NJEA producing it. This is uh, Mr. Sai, the science guy, on video. Let's go to it. We lift five newtons with one newton of force. So what's the mechanical advantage? Five divided by one. For nearly 40 years, Albert Seidlecki has taught science to middle school students. Most of those years have been spent here at Medford Township Memorial Middle School, where he's affectionately known as Mr. Sai. Remember, it's very important that you observe carefully what happens. Throughout his career, Mr. Sai has touched many of his students' lives by using a hands-on learning approach and also challenging them to always do their best. But he never realized how much he meant to some of these kids until he received a phone call from a former student. The secretary said, it's not another teacher, it's not the school nurse, it's a doctor from the Dallas-Fort Worth area who would adamantly wants to speak to you right this minute. And she what said, it's do a, a Dr. Bono. Do, and I said, it's Lee Bono. I said, Lee, Lee, what's going on? I said, what are you calling me for? Lee was one of Mr. Sai's students from the mid-80s, and since then has become a noted neurosurgeon. I was operating a judge. The judge, I had to do what's called an awake craniotomy, where I'm doing a, a brain procedure on someone who's awake because the tumor is in their motor area of speech. The judge uh, had difficulty speaking and after the surgery was finished, uh, he could speak, and he was crying. And the wife was crying as well, and I was at the bedside. He said, you make sure that you thank Mr. Sai. He didn't really use Mr. Sai's name, but the person, that, the teacher that you had. Make sure you thank him for the inspiration to be here. He called me. It changed the way I looked at every student from that phone call on. It was a, it was a life-changing phone call. And I said, why would you call me? He said, do you remember that day after school? I took the brain and spinal cord out of the frog. You told me it was the best one you'd ever seen. He said to me, you know, you got the hands for surgeon. You're a smart, bright boy, and you could be a surgeon. You could be a brain surgeon if you wanted to. I remember that. I remember that clearly. You could be a brain surgeon. And that is a very important thing, especially when you're 13 years old. Because if you didn't think that, or if you had no idea you even wanted to be a brain surgeon, now that pops into your head. After that, I really realized I wanted to be a brain surgeon, and so I did it. Had he not said that, maybe it wouldn't have happened. But it's very important for an educator not only teach their lessons, but to help shape the young mind. And he wasn't just coming to work to make a paycheck. He was coming to work to do his life's work. Look at you, look at you, you're a man. There's your paycheck right there. How does that make you feel? Oh man, it's amazing. And I'm lucky most of the teachers don't get recognition like that. But they deserve it. 
um, I've, I've been around the ro rodeo for 44 years. Have I really seen ever a bad teacher? Never. I've never seen a bad teacher and I look for them. I've never really seen anybody who was not dedicated to going to the most private place a person has. That's their mind. You get to go into a mind and make footprints in their snow for the first time, and those <clears throat> footprints develop into, well, surgeons, good doctors, lawyers, attorneys, hopefully good governors sometime, yeah. and presidents of the United States. It all comes from some interaction that they had with teachers. Now, am I a good teacher or a bad teacher? I'm a composite of all the teachers and all the students that I've ever taught, and that makes me what I am today. And I'm, I'm blessed that I have had the experiences that I've had. And but you know, <clears throat> I gotta ask you this. 44 years. There's no mandatory, no. right, retirement? 55 usually, I'm 66 now, so I'm hoping that, I'm hoping I'm gonna peak soon, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> But when you see Lee Bono like that, you know, yeah. and you see that video, again, thanks to our partners at the NJA for right. producing Classroom Close-Up. I don't know how they decided to pick uh, Mr. Sai. I'm glad they did. When you see that and you think of all the other kids that, uh, you know, they, they can't find or, you know, well, you know you've had some impact on, what possible reason would you ever want to stop? My wife and I talk about this, Kathy, my wife's a wind beneath my wings, um, often. And if I'm going to stop, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tragic ad adaptation in my life. Uh, ever since I was small, it's hard to believe this, but I've, I've been asked this in interviews and I, I know the question is why did you become a teacher? Ever since I was little, when I was nine, I had six-year-old kids follow me around my neighborhood. <laughs> when I was 14, I had nine-year-old kids follow me around my neighborhood. And dogs. It was little kids and dogs that always followed me around. Uh, in college, I realized I was in pre-med. My dad worked in a shipyard. At my age in college, my father was already working three years, stopped and went into World War II. He got out of World War II, I was there. I felt guilty having to go more to college. Mm. So I decided, you know, what can I do? I'm gonna teach. And it took me a long time to get to where I am. Once every four to four years, you can figure you're gonna get some recognition. Um, and I've finally achieved that so far, but I still haven't peaked. You know? I'll tell you what, you honor your profession. And for every uh, Lee Bono that you see in a video like that, I have a feeling there are countless other people whose lives you've affected and uh, you honor your colleagues by being here and uh, you honor us here on public television. Thank you, Mr. Sai. You're welcome. Good job. You're welcome. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. Wells Fargo, the law firm of Gibbons PC. PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. And by Barnabas Health. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.